Welcome to the underground. It is a chilly 55 degrees down here, so I am going to properly dress myself to not be cold. Much better. You just came down six flights of stairs, known as the entry portal, and that circled what once held a large freight elevator. That was, of course, taken out when this place was decommissioned. Now, we're gonna go check out the control building. This is the control building. It is a 100 foot in diameter dome. And it is a two story centralized structure. If you look over here, you will notice that the inner structure doesn't actually touch the outer structure at all. All of the equipment in this room was either attached to the shock resistant floors or hung by the ceiling on springs. This level was primarily where people's living quarters were, as well as things like the cafeteria. Now, let's go check out the HVAC room. This is the HVAC room, back in the 60s, which was the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning room. Over here, there's a bunch of leftover props from an independent feature film that was shot here. The film was star Dominique Monaghan, who was one of the hobbits on Lord of the Rings. And the film was a sci-fi film called Deep Burial, and I believe it's still in post-production. Is left over from that. This room was primarily living quarters and the cafeteria was also somewhere down in this area. Sometimes when I was little, I would imagine what it looked like when it was the 1960s, all the offices here. This room, I turned into a set for a film that my short film called To Hell With It, which you will hopefully see coming out in October, but we turned it into a demon's home, a demon's house. So I don't want to spoil too much, so just fingers crossed, you'll see it in October. This was one of the main shower scenes that they did in the film Deep Burial, again with Dominique Monaghan. Except he wasn't showering, I think the girl was showering. Now we're going to head up to the second level to the command launch center. On this side, there would have been a lot of offices. This was a restroom. They even took the toilets when they decommissioned this place. And this 
the actual command launch center. This is where two Air Force officers would sit waiting for the call to launch a nuke. And that is the control dome. Now, we're gonna go see the antenna silos. <laughs> Isn't that cool? But listen to this. Pretty awesome. These are the two antenna silos. So those two wooden roofs that we saw right as I came through the security gate, this is what they led to. They're identical six foot story antenna silos, so I'm not gonna show you that one because it's exactly the same and it's not lit. So we can go over here. Ta-da! An antenna silo. In the event that a nuke was dropped nearby and all communication devices above ground were destroyed, the doors could open and the antennas would then go to the surface so that this facility could have communications with the outside world. Check out this blast door. Now that is not messing around. Literally, it's like as thick as my arm. So there are actually two levels to this facility. This is the main one, but then there's a second up there. I like to climb up to the second one. And then, there's one of the antenna cellars. Now let's head back down to the tunnel. The tunnels are fun to run down. Now that we've seen the antenna cellars, it's time to go see the missile cellars. We'll wait here. Not as cool of a tunnel, in my opinion. But what's down here might be. This is actually the concrete subflooring. This was where the actual flooring would have been. There's steel plates, but they scrapped it when they were decommissioning the place. They took a lot of stuff. They didn't joke around. Down this direction is the first of the th three missile silo sections. 
It looks all fancy and cool because of that independent film I talked about earlier. is the third missile silo section I showed you above ground. This is another blast door. They tried to take it with them and they didn't get very far. We're not gonna go that way because it's dark. So we're gonna go. This way. We use this to block open the blast door so we don't get locked inside. silo section, the second one I showed you above ground. Now, each of the three missile silo sections has three buildings. The first one, I will show you down here. This first building is the fuel terminal building. You can see right there that leads to the missile cell so that of course it had fuel to go places. The second of the three buildings is this way. equipment terminal building. To my left is where an elevator used to be. And to my right is a large hole that they made so they could put equipment down in here. This building held all of the equipment necessary to get the missile to launch. All of the lighting in this facility was put in by my father. So we haven't lit all the way back here because this is pretty far back. Also, we were never allowed, as we're never allowed now, to wander around here by ourselves because it's incredibly dangerous and not exactly childproof. Obviously. And of course, the third building, building to go along with these three is is the missile silo. This missile silo held a 98 foot tall nuclear missile. I'm gonna go down there to give you a better look.
We have climbed to the bottom of this missile silo. So if you want to see what it looks like, you can go ahead and check out my short film called Containment Breach, and you can go ahead and it'll show you all the coolness that is down there. Now I'm going to make my way back to the tunnel level. And this is the power dome. This building once had a second steel floor, but it was scrapped years ago. These are the air intake and air exhaust openings. Let's go check out the air intake. <laughs> what to do? Sometimes things move. Now that is what I call a view. This is the air intake building. Let's go check it out. The air was sucked in through these fan openings. There are 10 of them around here. So let's really quick go check out this area. One of the roofs near the entry portal, this is one of the roofs that covers the area. Just to give you some perspective from the upper ground, from the surface level. The surface is right up there. So the air was filtered through these large filters for one filtration, and then a second layer of filtration, and the rest of the air was then pumped into the power dome and then throughout the rest of the missile base. And now, let's make our way back down into the power dome. I think of it as my bat cave. This is the air exhaust building. It is much smaller than the air intake building because all they needed to do was blow the air out. This door is one of three doors that used to lead to the fuel tanks. But now, it leads directly to the pit, making it our exit from the underground. To some, this space is a reminder of humanity's destructive power. A place built out of fear, whose purpose was death. But I challenge the world to see this space as I see it. Casting away the shadows of what it once was, 
and embracing it through the eyes of a child. A child who saw its possibilities, limited only by imagination. A place of wonderment and adventure. A place to live, to play, and to learn. Long after I am gone, it will remain. Just like the pyramids before it. A testament to humanity's past. But perhaps in this future, what once held fear and death can be transformed into joy and life. Everybody say thank you to Zachary for cutting the missile bags. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Alright, now let's go show them the power dome. So somebody unplugged the lights, which is why we always have emergency lights. Like legitimately someone accidentally unplugged the lights up above. And it's pitch black down here without it. Thank God for this light. This is really scary because I was about to climb down that missile silo. Are you really scared? I'm fine. I can't see you at all. I wonder if I can see you in this camera. Where are you? Oh my god. See, this is this is how dark it is down here with no lights. That's the GoPro. That other than the GoPro. I can't see anything. Wait. You can see this is the reflection. Oh my god, now it's scary. Yeah, you're not moving. I'm not moving. I got my light, but oh, this is frightening. Oh my god. Yeah, you forgot how dark it is. You literally can't see anything. You literally cannot see anything. There's no light to, to, to adjust to. Nope. I can hear my own heartbeat. Yep. <laughs> It gets dark in here. Hey, Dad. Ready? For what? Ew.